Oh yeah. Welcome back to Master Your Glass with me, Livio Laro. Today we're gonna see if there really are some similarities between a pizza and a cocktail. Is there? You're gonna find out. Let's get into this. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna show you the components of a cocktail and I'm gonna compare them to the pizza uh, so that we can see the similarities between the two and also understand really some of the functions of how ingredients work. Now, if you're making a pizza, right, the first thing you want is really the pizza dough. Now, if you take the pizza dough, right, and all you do is you, um, you uh, put it in the oven, you really don't have a pizza yet. You just have really what is called a hunk of bread. And so in this case here, in order for it to become a pizza dough, we have to add, or, or in order for it to become a pizza, I should say, we have to add some ingredients to it. Now I'm gonna, just for the sake of the, um, just for the sake of this video to be quick, I'm gonna go ahead and just spin it really, really quickly and not make a big pizza, just make kind of a small guy right here. Okay, so this is the pizza dough. This is the base off which we will uh, make a cocktail or make a pizza, right? Now again, if we throw this in the oven, it's not a pizza, it's bread. Similar goes with spirits. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this bottle of rum. What is the base of the cocktail? What is the equivalent of the pizza dough? It's a spirit. Rum and gin and vodka and tequila and brandy and whiskeys of all sorts, all of those will give us what is the base on which we build our cocktail, similar to the base on which we build our pizza. So if I were making a cocktail right now, uh, my pizza dough or my base would be this rum. So I'm gonna go ahead and just to make things easy, I'm gonna put one and a half ounces of rum here, okay? So both foods have their base in it. Now again, how do we make this guy here turn into a pizza and how do we make this guy here turn into more than just a, a, a glass of rum? So we're gonna do that with the pizza by adding what is gonna modify the flavor of the dough. And what is gonna modify the flavor of the dough in this case is, well, good old tomato sauce, okay? So now if we were to take this, uh, pizza, right? And we were to put it in the oven, it's no longer bread. Why? Because bread is intended to be tasteless, like taste like its own ingredients. Now bread can come in different versions, wheat dough, rye dough, mixed dough, mixed grain dough, just like spirits can. Uh, what are we gonna do in the cocktail? What's the similarity? What is gonna turn this into a something that has some flavor to it. Well, in the case of the cocktail that I'm making, but in the case of mo most cocktails, it's liqueurs or fortified wines, right? They make a change in the beverage. And so I'm gonna go ahead in this one here, and I'm going to add a half an ounce of Grand Marnier, which is, an oil, which is a style of orange curacao. And now I can no longer call that a glass of rum, can I? I can no longer call that tasteless or tasting like the raw ingredients, it's got sugar and orange from the Grand Marnier that is giving it some extra flavors. Okay, so now technically this here can be a drink, right? The low ball category is typically made of a spirit and a modifier, a liqueur or a fortified wine. Uh, and just like this, I could potentially put it in the oven, pull it out. It wouldn't be an amazing pizza, but it would be a pizza. Now something to be said about tomato sauce. Tomato sauce is a little pungent, right? It, um, when you taste it, it's got a little tanginess, salt, a lot of sugar. Uh, there's a reason why we don't just go around drinking tomato sauce. It's not extremely palatable. So what are we gonna do to this, or what do pizza makers do in order to offset that? Well, they'll take something like mozzarella cheese, right? And they will just place it on top. And by putting that mozzarella cheese on top, what's happening is, is this, the cheese is going to melt and it's gonna create a little layer on top of the tomato sauce so that when you bite into it, you don't get that aggressive tomato flavor. Now, same thing here, picture being at the pool on, on a summer day or just on a summer day, just drinking rum and Grand Marnier, that would be pretty harsh. And so what do what is the tomato sauce of the cocktail? Well, those are things like sodas and 
juices, right? And so these here will soften up the cocktail so that you're not gonna get drunk immediately, similar to what the mozzarella cheese will do. So I am gonna go ahead right now and I'm gonna just squeeze so the juice of orange inside this drink here, just like that, okay? Soften up that aggressive blow of the two alcoholic ingredients. That should be a half an orange is about an ounce, so we're gonna call that one ounce of orange juice, just like we did here. Now we are somewhat apples to apples. Now, um, this cocktail, cocktail here might not taste amazing. We'll have to be the judge of that. But technically put, if this were lime juice, tequila, and Cointreau, it would be a margarita. If this were uh, brandy, lime juice, and Cointreau, it would be a sidecar. So this here is a technically correct cocktail structure, just like this here is a technically correct pizza. Now, sometimes in the pizza world, actually not sometimes, all the times, the pizza maker will add a few extra ingredients that are small, but they pack a little punch. And they don't do a whole lot visually, but they do a whole lot in flavor. And in this case here, it could be some garlic, right? So the garlic is not big. It's a little, this little uh, thing here that just basically uh, gives a boatload of of flavor to it. I'm also gonna go ahead and put some basil. That's also another ingredient that's really common that you can put on a pizza just to go ahead and um, give it again that little hint of flavor or a little accent to the pizza. Speaking of accent, cocktails also have their own accent. What is that ingredient that's really small and just a little bit goes a long way and packs a punch? Well, in the cocktail world, it could be aromatic bitters and they come in all sorts of colors and flavors and sizes. If you can think it, it exists out there. Another nice little accent could be maybe the peel of a, of a citrus. Again, these little drops are really small and they pack a punch. So what I'm gonna do in this one here is I'm gonna go ahead and add some pimento bitters by Dale DeGroff. I'm gonna just go ahead and throw one, two dashes in there just like that. And while I'm at it, and that will be, let's just say, the garlic of this pizza, and what about, or this cocktail, I should say, and what about the basil? Well, let's go ahead and add the oils. See those little oils, nice spraying out, they will give a lot of flavor to this cocktail. Now, this part here can also be done at the end of the drink where you just float it on top, but for purposes of creating the same uh, uh, analysis here, I wanted to put it together. Now, what else is left? This pizza is good to go. Of course, you can put a little bit of oil, which I will. You can also put uh, a little bit of uh, olives or, or whatever else. But nonetheless, this one here is actually ready, as is this. This one here is gonna go in the oven because the oven, of course, the heat is going to cook it. Now, what is the heat of, or what is the oven of the cocktail? Well, in our case, it's ice. And what I, we're gonna do here is we're gonna add ice to this drink. Ice is to the bartender what the flame or the oven is to the chef or the pastry chef. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy in the oven and I'm gonna go ahead and shake this guy and let's see the final result. Okay, and I'm gonna set that right there just for a hot second. I'm gonna go ahead and try to put some my pizza over here, get that going. Let's see if I can do this. This is the one man pizza show here. And drag that on. And there she is. Okay. Look at that baby. And I'll move it on to here. And of course, I'm not a professional pizza maker, so I'm sure some pizzaiolos out there are cringing and I agree with you. Okay, so now while that pizza is cooking, we're gonna go ahead and check out this drink right here and see what it's all about. Oh, 
Okay, we'll go ahead and top this with a little bit of soda. Again, we're doing that because we do have a little harsh ingredients here, so we want to soften it up, just like we did with the um, olive oil on top of the pizza. Let's go ahead and check this out, just like that. And I do have an orange peel here. We'll, for lack of a better example, we'll garnish it. And this garnish here goes in before the ice. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just do this to give it that little garnish that I'm looking for. Why not? I do have a little lemon peel here. Why not use it? All right. And there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna pick, compare this to the pizza. We'll see if it came out good. We'll see if the pizza came out good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, everything's there. Hmm. Yep, it's nice, it's nutty. It's very Polynesian tiki style, rum forward. Getting that curacao, uh, getting those orange flavors. If anything, I would have loved to see it have a little bit more acid. So maybe lime juice uh, instead of the orange juice. I do love the flavors that are the allspice flavors that are coming from the, the bitters. And there you have a cocktail. I'll put this right here. And uh, why don't I just call that the pizza cocktail? And uh, let's go check on that pizza. All righty. So I know you pizza makers out there are cringing on my pizza right now, and I can understand that. Uh, but here we go, the result of both. Now on this pizza here, even though I already put it when I cooked it, I'm just gonna throw some extra basil because fresh basil uh, is gonna lighten and brighten things up, just like I topped this one with the soda water. So we're gonna brighten both of these up. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a cut and see if this pizza actually came out good. Not that it's relevant to teaching cocktails right now, but it is relevant to the fact that it smells really good. And uh, I wanna try. Alrighty, this thing is still steaming, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a sip first. That definitely got even better uh, with a little bit of time because now, the, now that the ice has melted a little bit, the ingredients got integrated, it's a little bit less potent. That orange flavor from the Grand Marnier and from the squeezed citrus is actually coming out extremely nicely, and I'm digging it. Let's see what this pizza's all about. Oh. Mm. Maybe high on the garlic. Okay, so what is the bottom line of this video is that we make cocktails with components that are similar to food. The base, which are the spirits, the modifiers, which are the liqueurs, the mixers, which are sodas and juices, the accents, which are bitters or lemon peels. Then there's the ice that plays into this game. Just like in the pizza world, if you're cooking with, um, a certain type of uh, fire made from a certain type of wood, that wood will influence the flavor of the pizza, just like ice or melted water influences this drink. Now, something needs to be said. Um, not all drinks requ require a base, a modifier, a mixer, and an accent and the ice, right? Some of them will only require a couple of them. Picture a highball, right? It only has a spirit and a mixer. Or picture a lowball, it only has a spirit and a modifier. But nonetheless, these, this is how the components work inside of a cocktail. If you want to learn more about how this works, by the way, my new book, Armando Rosario and I, have come up with edition two of the 12 cocktails. This book has been around since 2014. It has taught thousands of bartenders out there how to make cocktails. I will leave the link below to the 12 cocktails. And what's important that's, uh, that's uh, you will tie in with this video are two things. Number one, affinity flavors. Not every mixer goes well with every modifier, with every juice. There are certain affinities and you will find that chart in here. Number two thing is, is if you're serving guests at home or if you're serving guests as a bartender, uh, how to really dissect a drink when somebody just comes up to you and says, I want a cocktail. Well, now there are three questions you ask them and those three questions will take you 
or we'll take them exactly to the drink they like and you will help them do that. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Master Glass with me, Livio Laro. And if you did, give it a like, give it a subscribe and come on back for more expert instruction for everyday consumption.